Hey everyone, I'm Thomas and this is day 31 of 100 days of code in IoT challenge. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because there's not going to be any coding, there's not going to be any tinkering, just me doing a quick presentation on an IoT framework, a project that I'm going to build out of the core library, the library I've been constantly using in, the, in my previous videos, right? As you probably know. The reason I'd like to build this framework simply is to create a library with a set of Internet of Things tools that can be used by anyone, not just me. I mean, at the beginning, the goal is mainly to speed up my development process, right? So development of next IoT devices, IoT applications. But I hope in the future it's also going to be useful for other developers, right? So it would be nice if that uh, happened to be a, a contribution to the community. But yeah, we'll see how it goes, right? But also, I would like to challenge myself, right? This whole thing is a is an IoT challenge. So it would be nice to see what can I do, what can I learn about C++ language. So yeah, let's get started. Let me start from explaining two main parts the IoT framework I'm going to be building is going to be split into. So we've got core and communication. And the best example to show you what I mean by core and communication is the core library that is going to be based for the IoT framework, right? I'm going to turn this library into a framework library, right? And uh, what we're going to look at is these four classes, Wi-Fi manager, HTTPS client, even dispatcher and timer. And, uh, um, and yeah, even dispatcher and timer are the foundation, right? These are parts of Wi-Fi manager and HTTPS client, right? For example, Wi-Fi manager cannot work properly in a non-blocking way without the timer. It cannot work in an event-based way without even dispatcher, right? Let me show you on this example, right? We've got connect that calls on connected callback function provided to the method when it is connected or the timeout has been reached without connecting to Wi-Fi. And this can only be done with the timer set on loop until right that is that is being continuously called on the loop function right within the timer and for the event based um we've got the scenario when uh we finally it finally manages to to connect and we dispatch wi-fi connected events so all the listeners waiting for this to happen are notified about this about this thing right about this event so, um, yeah, and the same for HTTPS client. However, this uh, doesn't have an event dispatcher. It doesn't really need to. We've got on response callback function to be provided. And uh, here we use a timer. We just use timer. And that timer, let me show you, is uh, mainly on the set, on the set clock, actually. It is on the set clock. In this case, this code is not really up to date, sorry about that, because uh, you probably remember me extracting set clock out of HTTPS client. And uh, naturally, when we start writing any code, uh, we're going to start from the, the state of the code where this is extracted out. But yeah, anyway, um, the point, my point here is essentially we've got those two main classes, communication classes, right? They provide some IoT feature, right? And um, this even dispatcher and, and timer, they just, uh, and this just allow this functionality to happen in a non-blocking way or in an even based way, right? So I would think about the core as a foundation, as the, uh, the, the building blocks, the foundation blocks, to build other utility IoT classes, right? Such as Wi-Fi Manager, HTTPS Client, but there is more. Let me show you. Um, because, yeah, this is not everything I'm planning to do. 
apart from uh, apart from let me start from communication maybe apart from the Wi-Fi management and the HTTP HTTPS client, we've got some extra features I would like to add, like um, yeah, for Wi-Fi management, scan networks, right? Uh, for uh, async HTTP server, for the server, right? We have built-in ESP two six six web server, but this can serve only one connection at the time. I would like to improve that. I'm gonna start from a library. I'm gonna start from a library. ESP async web server. It's a really nice library for the servers. However, it's got one feature that is missing. Let me quickly show you how you define endpoints. Yeah, so here, here we got an example of an endpoint. It's very similar to what we have the, with the default ESP8266 web server. However, what we're getting in this callback is a, a pointer to the request, to the async web server request. And the problem with this library is that you cannot have a non-blocking code inside this callback, right? There is a workaround according to this issue someone created on that on that problem with the non-blocking code inside this callback and some answers to um, to work this around. So that, that's something I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do, or maybe I fork this library and try to do it myself. But yeah, um, I'm gonna talk more about this once I actually start building this, right? So when we have video about uh, writing, you know, implementing this HTTP server. Um, yeah, what else we have? Uh, WebSockets, MQTT, protobufs, access point management, Wi-Fi configuration, device configuration. Um, let me talk about the details in a second. First, I'm going to go back to core because these, again, these are going to be the foundation classes, the building blocks, right? So apart from even dispatching and timer that we already know how they work, we've got async programming. Promises and futures, right? Because we sort of have async programming already implemented and incorporated in these classes in the Wi-Fi manager and HTTPS client. And this is done through the callback approach. So on a response for the send request and on connected for the Wi-Fi manager for and on connected for the Wi-Fi manager connect. However, the callback approach is not the perfect approach, as some of you may probably know already from the early days of Node.js and the callback hell that using callbacks may cause. Let me show you an example. So we have function one that takes a callback. And inside the callback, you have another function that takes another callback. And inside this callback, you have another function that takes another callback. And on top of that, the first function doesn't take just a single callback. There is more callbacks and other parameters. And there can be another function here and so on, right? So there is obviously a better approach to this. You can define all the functions outside and here just pass those, those functions, right? You could do something like on fun three done, right? And so on, you could have, and you would have the, the, the definition, the declaration of this function outside of this callback hell, right? But still, for those who don't know how to go about this, it may lead to uh, a confusing code, right? I would like to avoid this and uh, I would like to do one step forward and um, like it's been done with JavaScript, with Node.js, um, what they've done is to create promises, right? Create promises or futures as this is called in a different programming language, right? It's uh, it's called promises and some programming languages, other programming languages, this is called futures. Uh, Rust is an example, uh, and I think C++ as well. However, the built-in futures implementation uses uh, threads. 
and because we don't have a threading on ESP266 and I have no idea how to build this, if it's even possible. I'm thinking about building a very simple um, a futures implementation and that's why we've got this as a point here. So there's going to be one video about futures. So we won't have to do like I showed you, but instead we will have something like function one and then function two, right, then, and so on, right? So we can chain them in a nice way. So that's for the futures. Apart from the async programming, uh, we will have logging and remote serial communication. We already log the data from our programs using serial monitor, right? So this is just going to be extension of the of what we have with the serial monitor. And ideally we would have something, um, some, some, some way to send this log information remotely. Maybe we could use a e, a ELK stack, right? Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. That would be ideal. So we'll have a one nice repository of logs that are being sent remotely, right? From the device to the cloud somewhere. And also for the logging itself, we, we could have like, you know, more information about, you know, time when the message has been logged, right? When the log has been created. And also what we could have is a level of the log, right? So like, you know, for the production grade devices and the, the, the implementation, right? On the, on the, on the device that is production grade. Um, config and, regi and registry. So essentially config as a registry pattern for the uh, cases where you just need to store some config on the device. Unit testing that I have underlined. The reason I have this underlined is because the next video is gonna be about unit testing. That is my personal opinion about unit testing. So I treat the code that is without unit uh, tests as not production grade, right? And I would like everything to be production grade. So I'm gonna start looking into unit testing in the next video and then add unit tests to existing classes in the library. Deployment. So deployment uh, is simply making the firmware upgrade um, over the air, right? So over the network instead of doing it like we do with um, USB cable. Okay, there is a feature already, there is class uh, and functions for that built in in ESP8266. So I'm probably gonna make use of that, maybe add some extra features to uh, make it possible to do it in the, in the non-blocking way, ideally, right? Maybe not the actual upgrade process that I think has to be blocking, but uh, when, when the, 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 the firmware is being downloaded, maybe we could do something about that, okay? And two last one with the question marks. So it's debugging. Uh, question mark because I don't know if it's possible for, for ESP8266 and streams. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, that would be nice to have um, a pipe feature, pipe slash unpipe. And that could be really helpful with the HTTP, HTTPS client and uh, file system, right? So we could just uh, create two streams like read stream, write stream and just pipe one to another. So uh, we won't have to do all these uh, while loops uh, where you, uh, you know, just less, less code for the developer when uh, working with the, with the streams themselves, right? So like request stream, response stream, file stream, but other streams, if you can think about uh, another streams that, that, that would be possible. There is probably something in C++ already. So I'm going to look into that. Cool. So, um, yeah, and now I'm going to go back to communication again, right? And uh, we're going to talk about, um, so yeah, for the Wi-Fi management, scan networks, what is missing? Time sync, we already have this done. Async HTTPS client. So once I have unit testing done, we're going to do futures, video about futures, how to implement them. And then refactoring video about how to turn what we have here, HTTPS client and Wi-Fi manager into, um, I mean, 
you know, those main methods here. So the connect, disconnect, and send request, how to make them um, uh, return a future instead of uh, being callback based. Okay. HTTP server, uh, I've already covered, and uh, WebSockets, MQTT, and protobufs. So, regarding those, um, why WebSockets? Maybe that's, that's where we're going to start. So imagine the case where you want to have a two-way of communicating between your ESP 266 and the cloud, the internet. And uh, um, yeah, imagine the case where uh, you would like to, um, your user, once device is configured, it connects to the WebSocket server, and then you can send some command from the server to the device. For example, to upgrade the device, okay? And uh, it would be very problematic with HTTPS server, right? Because connecting to someone's local network, which is usually behind the firewall, right? Um, forcing users to configure on their own, not really, right? But WebSockets, this is sort of inverse because you can make the device connect to the WebSocket server and then you can send some information to, to the device, okay? Um, MQTT, this one I need to find about more because I don't really have many information. Um, this is apparently, this is a standard in IoT world, so I should know something. Um, I don't know, to be honest, right now. Um, I admit that. So that's going to be uh, something for me to, to, to read about and, and study. And protobufs as another idea of communication um, uh, at the binary level, right? So not much da data being sent and maybe faster. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how exactly MQTT protocol works. So I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe I will do a comparison video about WebSockets, MQTT and protobufs and we'll see what's the best to use. Okay. And the last one access point management that consists of Wi-Fi configuration and device configuration. So let me explain. Access point, basically with this device, you can create a Wi-Fi network. You can create Wi-Fi network and um, once a user is connected to this Wi-Fi network, you can essentially use the web server to um, display an interface, right? And that interface could be for Wi-Fi configuration, right? So imagine you have production grade device and you would like your user to uh, make this device connect to his own Wi-Fi, right? So what you do is um, you, you deploy the call to the device that as soon as the power is connected to the device, creates a Wi-Fi network. And when user connects to this Wi-Fi network, um, there is this access point like, you know, uh, at the airport, at the airport, right? You can essentially open the, the, the website automatically with the Wi-Fi configuration and show the available uh, networks. User can pick one, just provide the password, right, for his home Wi-Fi. And that would be it, right? The device would store this data, connect, and that's it. It could, it could ask for additional information um, and, and that's why I've got the uh, device configuration here as well, right? So it doesn't have to be just Wi-Fi configuration, can be any configuration. And, uh, and yeah, um, it's, it's going to be separate video about access point management in general. So you will see what I mean by that. This is really nice feature, by the way. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think we've got everything covered. Um, one thing to note is I'm not going to do it at once, right? Because that would not be a few videos, that would be many videos, maybe 10, 15 next videos if I wanted to focus just on building this framework. And obviously that's not, that's not uh, th the point of this, right? I'm thinking more about gradually building that and uh, I'm just, you know, going towards this direction that I set for myself. So this is more like, you know, the goals of, of the IoT framework I would like ideally to have. Right. Um, so yeah, let me tell you um, what what are again like remind you because I've already mentioned it. 
what are the next uh, what, what the next videos are gonna be about, right? So we're gonna start from unit testing, as I said, because I would like everything to be production grade. Then we do promises async programming, okay, and we'll have a refactoring session to change what we have right from the callback approach to the futures and we're going to have another video about logging and that's it after that next project next interesting useful project i'm thinking about not gonna tell you now but you will see it is gonna be quite cool right so yeah that's it for today thanks for watching if you find this content useful interesting and you don't want to miss the next video tomorrow about unit testing um, subscribe to my channel click the subscribe button below thanks and bye